it's me, T, from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet. Hey, look, I'm going to let you know what, uh, well, actually what happened. Um, as you may or may know, the, the purpose of this, not the purpose, this, use, this YouTube channel started really because I was trying to tell young people to record their elders, you know, and nobody listened to me. You know, see, I, I'm an archivist, or an archivist, I like to say, and I've been doing archiving for, you know, or recording form and stuff like since like 1982 or even before that, whatever. Um, steadily, I'm talking about. And so when I started this YouTube channel, it's because nobody was, it's a long story in some place, but it's actually a short story. But the point is, um, this channel is not monetized. It's not, it, it's creative commons, you know, and really it is, it's, it's like a um, a living, a, an, 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 an oral memoir, you know, of stuff that has happened in my life. And uh, I'm at my best friend's house in uh, St. Louis, Missouri right now. Um, and uh, so I came across a bunch of stuff, you know, stuff because he, it's since like I've known him since 70, 72. So he's, He's been collecting stuff, you know, all my stuff for a long time, you know, poetry and all this stuff. But I came across this long article, you know, about when I was in the Air Force and uh, we did this project on sickle cell anemia, but let me, and, and lead poisoning, but let me uh, read the thing to you. Editor's note, uh, this comes from a thing, of Magu oh, Air Tides, uh, Maguire Air Tides was a, a publication from Maguire Air Force Base right there, okay? Um now this newspaper is an official is this newspaper is an unofficial publication published weekly by the uh, Times Advertiser Printing Company, uh, blah 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 Pemberton, New Jersey. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this newspaper receives American Forces Press Service, Air Force News Service, and Military Airlift Com uh, Airlift Command News Service. I was part of Military Airlift Command MAC. That was McGuire Force Base. That's what we're Material, all material may be reproduced, kindly credit news source. Oh, this is the same thing as my YouTube channel. You know, I'm Creative Commons. You just credit, credit news source. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, not, not whatever you want with it. Hey, hey, be principal. Okay, so let me read the article. Oh, by the way, this picture there is uh, uh, my NCOIC uh, William Clack, Bill Clapp right there. And that's me. Oh, looking through a microscope. Uh, oh, it's not very really real. This is by Airman First Class Steve uh, Giger. G E um, G R E G E R. I guess it's Giger. Sickle cell anemia is a blood disorder which is responsible for killing one in 400 blacks in the United States. Around 10% of the black population have what is known as a trait of that disease or the disease. There is no cure for sickle cell anemia and it can be transmitted from one generation to the next. Because of this, uh, detecting the disease as soon as possible is of utmost importance to all people who may be affected by the disease. Right? Helping to fight the disease among blacks and other people of African, Middle Eastern, or Mediterranean descent on Maguire and in the surrounding area are several dedicated people. Working with the medical side of the fight are two sergeants at the McGuire Clinic's laboratory, uh, Sergeant uh, Staff Sergeant um, Bill Clapp and Sergeant Tony Sloan. Hey, they spelled my name wrong. I hate when they put an E at the end of my name. That's the English way. I, I identify with the Irish, you know, with the Welsh, with the Scottish. They, they don't put no E there. You know why they start putting like extra letters in there? Because back in the day, they got paid for, you know, like paid for how many letters they had in the thing. I hate when they do that. I'm sorry. I went off. Let me... Get back to the thing here. Uh, uh, Staff Sergeant uh, uh, Bill Clapp and Sergeant Tony Sloan have been responsible for setting up a testing program on and off base. In the late in late 1971, Sergeant Sloan came up with the idea for the testing. Oh, that be, it's my idea, yay! Um, uh, 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 through Sergeant Clapp's help, equipment was ordered and testing was begun at the clinic. Quickly word got around and it wasn't long before a hundred people per month were being tested. Hey, I did a good thing, man. See what happens to mine. Keep on going. Uh, last spring, news about the McGuire sickle cell testing program reached the office of the mayor of New York City. Of New York, okay. Rudy Van Nexie, a V-A-N-E-X-L-E. Rudy Van Nexie? Okay. 
a co-coordinator for Mayor John Lindsay con- contacted Sergeant Clapp and asked for help in testing children in the ghetto areas of the city during the summer. Sergeant Clapp said the response among the lab people were uh, here was tremendous. Both blacks and whites volunteered to go to New York on their days off and help test the ghetto children for sickle cell anemia and lead poisoning. Let me just say this. This is the whole thing. Wherever you are, if you think you're in a, this is the time of the Vietnam War, you know what I mean? I, and I never, I, I never went, I never left country, whatever have you. But uh, when I was, um, before, before the, I was in, I was in service in 78 to 74, right? But I was one of the most unlikely people to get into the service because like, I knew, I mean, I was trained by some, 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 some brothers who had been in Vietnam. Yeah, I was in a revolutionary cell. Nobody would think that I would be in the Air Force. But anyway, the point is, that's a whole nother story. But the point is, I was there. So I just took advantage of the situation I was to help what? The community. Because my whole thing is always to help you know, the downtrodden. I come from the downtrodden. When I say downtrodden, I'm not just talking about black people. When I go to the Patterson Projects, and Patterson Projects, you know, right, my next door neighbors are white, next to them was Puerto Rican. You know, everybody in the Patterson Projects was just poor. <laughs> the downtrodden, that's it. So that's my whole mentality. Okay, let me, I went off on that. Let me keep going. Um, in all, 300 children were tested on Thursdays during June through August, 1972. For their work in uh, the McGuire Volunteers received certificates of appreciation from Mayor Jan, John, uh, Mayor Lindsay at a ceremony in December. Oh, that's this picture here. This is our little ceremonial picture when they gave us a little plaque like that. See, that's John Lindsay there and my other lab buddies, Bill Clapp. Uh, this guy's Myrtle there. What's the other, I forgot this other cat's name. Uh, what's this other cat's name? Oh, yeah, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis and Steve, you know. Dennis and Steve, good guys, man. We had a really good lab. One, one guy's, one guy's missing. Another white guy, uh, Robert, Robert Smith. Oh, Robert, he was the one that was dating uh, 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 Colonel Stanton's daughter. Stan was a black guy, you know, and he's a white guy, so they had the interracial dating thing going on. Hey, we was progressive lab, you know. Sorry. Um, let me see. Let me go. Let me go. To, okay, just send up. In the local area, Sergeants Clapp and Sloan did testing in the grade schools of Pemberton Township and just completed testing Monday for sickle cell and other anemias at all McGuire at, at all McGuire based schools and Northern Burlington High School. We did a lot of work. We were working, boy. Uh, because of the hereditary nature of sickle cell anemia. Oh, I'm sorry, this, this is a quote. Quote, because of this hereditary nature of sickle cell anemia, close quote. Sergeant Sloan uh, commented, okay, we have obtained a film on the disease from the National Pharmaceutical Company or from a National Pharmaceutical Company and has been incorporated into the pre-marriage seminar conducted by the base chaplains. Ooh, that's all in quotes. That's interesting. I don't remember that. To further the knowledge of those people about sickle cell anemia, a general information file on the disease is maintained at the clinic laboratory. And Sergeant Clapp has given several lectures on the disease at various base functions. Hey, we were at, hey, it was clinic. We were, hey, we were, we were working. We were active, you know. Also active in the battle against sickle cell anemia are the members of the McGuire Black Caucus. Oh, the Black Caucus. Okay. <laughs> That's another organization. And I, I did this at sickle cell anemia. I did that initially to start that. But the Black Caucus, we were like, I don't know how to. I don't know how to politely put it, but I started. I helped start that organization. Me and another cat. Right? We were just, well, black caucus. We were like, we had our way. Let's put it that way. I, I can't go into it right now, but you know, we did stuff. You know, never let a political <laughs> somebody who knows something into your into your thing, man. We did stuff. I got. Shh, don't tell anybody. Since the formation of the caucus in 1971, it has been involved in raising money for research and testing for the disease in November of 1971. The caucus uh, sponsored a sickle cell benefit at Fort Dick Sports Arena. Oh, I remember. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Twelve bands. Twelve bands participated in a total and raised a total of four thousand dollars. 
Okay, tw- we had it, it was uh, the sports arena, the the Fort Dix sports arena is like a, a hangar, like, like you know, the air airplane air hangar, right? And um, and we we had b- booked twelve bands, like twelve local bands, twelve full on bands, right? And the stipulation was we had to be out of there by twelve midnight. I think we started at six or something like that. Somehow we saw it. So what what the stipulation was? The last band on, right? They could stay on past the 12 o'clock day, you see? So what I did, you know, and I was stage manager. We set this thing where we had, we had, had two stages. I, I guess you would call I was really production stage manager. I stayed right doing the whole thing. We had two stages for performance and a, and a thing in the middle for like the MCs, you know, like an MC, like the, 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 the we got a local DJ from, no, a DJ from Philadelphia. We had, uh, I think, Miss Black Philadelphia or Miss Black Pennsylvania. They, anyway, so they, they, they were in the middle. And so when a band would finish, they would say something, but automatically the next band would start, right? Now, here's what happened. This thing was going so hot that the, the band before the last band, they didn't want to get off. Now, if they didn't get off by 12 o'clock, that means that we couldn't put this last band on. They've been waiting all this time. I'm telling them, we're sitting there, I get up and go, this boy wouldn't listen to me. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You have no idea who I am. I'm trained. I'm a trained stage manager from, from theater. <laughs> But you, man, you know what I did? I said, uh, I just pulled the plug. Started the other band. Hey, there's always an answer. Sorry, I, had, I went off on that, but I got that really bothered me. They would do that. In the summer of 1972, the Black Caucus sold tickets on the base for a sickle cell anemia benefit at the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York. In October, Sickle Cell 2 was held at McGuire C-141 Wash, wash Rack to the, to the tune of seven soul bands. Oh, okay. Uh, approximately $3,000 was raised from the affair. I should say there's all these things, you know, I, I organize, I sort of like, you know, call me producer. I mean, I, when I say stage manager, I mean like I controlled everything, right? But my man, Tony, Mc, Tony McBride, who was from Philadelphia, he was the cat. Tony, man, talk about ultimate producer, man. He's the one that got the bands. He got he, he just he was a he was a mover shaker. I mean, he was like a wheeler dealer, you know. One time, we tell, <laughs> he was a schemer. One time we got into a couple of times we got into the Spectrum, the big thing in arena in Philadelphia to see bands. Well, one time like we got to see Isaac Hayes that way, free of charge. Because Tony was a schemer. I was like his like that sidekick, but I'm gonna like. I don't say I encourage the man, but let's say we were not those two. If you put us together, <laughs> anything could happen. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm almost finished. Almost finished. Through the donation, um, through the donation, through the donations raised at Sickle Cell Two, the Black Caucus gave seven hundred dollars to the Pemberton Township Sickle Cell Anemia Organization for the purchase of a tester, which is used to test for the disease and children attending um, uh, Pemberton Township Schools. And there's a the thing that's fighting sickle cell, you know, uh, fighting sickle cell, Tony Stone, Bob, uh, McGuire, uh, instrumental in setting up the testing procedure, by this is exam. Here they examine blood samples in a clinic's laboratory, you know. Like I said, you know, you don't be looking around and say, oh, we can't do this, oh, no, no, oh, the authorities won't let us do that. You find a way. Just find a way. Do what you got to do. Just a little suggestion uh, from me, T, from the Patterson's taking the trenches, bet, letting you know what, I, what I've been through, what I done did a long time ago. 71? Wow, that was a long time ago.